Hello and welcome to the Zoomer Hall concert series brought to you by Natural Calm, the better magnesium. I'm Kathleen Kajioka. Now, if you're listening on the radio, remember that you can watch our live webcast. You can see this performance by going to our website, classicalfm.ca. I am very happy to introduce the musicians who are going to fill our airwaves and this room for the next hour. They hail from the very busy early music scene in Montreal, and they are uh, known for their polished energy and finely honed style. Today, they're going to introduce us to a composer that you have likely never heard of, one and, uh, Georg Anton Kreuser. Please welcome Infusion Baroque. Thank you. 
We're live at Zoomer Hall. That was the Quintetto in C Major by Garrick Anton Kreuser, played by our guests this afternoon in Fusion Baroque from Montreal. And that's one of ten works by Kreuser on their new CD called Kreuser. And I have it here if you're looking online. You can check it out. Uh, now let's meet uh, in Fusion Baroque. There are four core members of the group on Baroque flute, Alexa Rain Wright. On violin, Salini Amawat. On uh, cello, Andrea Stewart. And on harpsichord, Rona Nadler. And they're augmented today by violist Jacques-André Houle and uh, cellist Amanda Kiesmat. Now, if you're wondering, that was a quintet and there are six people on stage, I'll just take the liberty of explaining that Amanda and Rona are actually filling the same baseline function, so they kind of count as one. Um, Salini, I wanted to ask you about Kreuzer. Like, I've been swimming deep in the waters of early music for a long time, and I had never heard of him. How did he fall under the radar? So we, we had never heard of him either until about two years ago uh, when we were doing some research for a program for Music for Four. Um, and we came upon this composer. He did an arrangement. It was a quintet, but it was for flute, violin, viola, obligato cello, so the cello had a solo line, and basso continuo. And we, we read through his music, and we were just absolutely fascinated by it. Um, Kreuzer was a German composer in the late 18th century, and he wrote, uh, technically he wrote in the classical era, but um, as you can hear and see, we have these influences from the Baroque era with the basso continuo team, and um, it just, Together, it c c creates this really rich texture um, that really enjoy playing. And Kreuzer, he's not known to us today, but he was actually quite famous in his time. Um, he was very um, influential in Germany, particularly in the city of Mainz. And uh, Leopold Mozart actually wrote about him, and he said that um, Kreuzer had very tuneful melodies and was a very uh, important composer. And others wrote, um, everyone should compose like like Kreuzer. Yeah, he's yeah. definitely very conversational. It's so great to hear all the different textures, like having the obligato cello and the unisons between the viola and the cello there, or between the violin and the and the viola, and of course flute. And I, I imagine you're really fond of him because he, you know, adapts, his, or his music fits your combination so well. For sure, for sure. I mean, it's very comfortable for us. Kreuzer was a violinist himself, so I think he really knew um, how to write um, comfortably for, for strings, and, you know, with the flute just adds such a, a really light, gorgeous texture to it as well. So I think we really... We really enjoy playing his, his music. Great. Well, we're going to hear more uh, Kreuzer later on, but when we come back from the break, we're going to hear from a better-known composer, C.P.E. Bach, as our concert, Zoomer Hall concert with uh, Infusion Broke continues right after the break. Yep. Hi. Um, how long has the group been together? Uh, our first concert was in 2013. So this would be our sixth season, fifth season. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you playing on period instruments? Yes, we are. We, we're all playing on on period instruments, um, either antique instruments or reproductions of of instruments that would have been made during the time of the music that was composed. Welcome back to the Zoomer Hall Concert Series brought to you by Natural Calm, the Better Magnesium. I'm Kathleen Kajioka. This afternoon, we are enjoying a performance by Montreal's Infusion Baroque, and right now they're going to play us a trio by Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach. Thank you. 
We are live from Zoomer Hall, listening to Infusion Baroque from Montreal perform the music of C.P.E. Bach. That was his trio sonata in A. C.P.E. Bach, of course, a famous son of Johann Sebastian Bach, and perhaps his most successful. And important for flute players, he spent, uh, you know, he was really important as a keyboard uh, teacher and pioneer, but he also worked for Frederick the Great for a long time, who was an avid flute player, so he wrote a lot of music for him. Alexa, I'm wondering, how challenging is the flute writing from C.P.E. Bach? It's quite difficult. <laughs> so Frederick was a great uh, flute player, not only a great emperor, I guess. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's really interesting. Um, C.P.E. Bach actually wrote uh, one of the staples of the Baroque flute repertoire. Um, he wrote an unaccompanied sonata in A minor for the flute. And um, it's incredibly complex. Like It's a piece that um, you learn over years and years, um, not so much to play, but to understand it. Um, C.P.E. Bach really seems to have invented his own uh, idioms and um, melodic fragments that, that go together in, in ways like a jigsaw puzzle. And there's many ways you can put it together. Um, and if you change one little detail, it changes the entire meaning of the phrase. Um, so it's a very fascinating composer. You can really, really dig into it. It's really fun to play. Now, I don't think we've actually ever had a Baroque flute in Zoomer Hall before, certainly on our airwaves, but not in this room. So tell us a bit about this beautiful wooden flute that you're playing and how it's different from the modern flute. Um, so the biggest difference is that it's it's made of wood. Um, there are also no keys. There's no hardware except for this little key at the end. Um, this allows me to have an, an E-flat. And all the other um, sharps and flats are used um, with forked fingerings. And so um, that means that... Uh, if I were to play an A and a G, to play a note between an A and a G, I have to add fingers down here. Oh, I see. So you skip a hole, but that somehow makes a half tone. Exactly. And that um, changes the sound of the flute. That means that whenever you play a forked fingering, um, the resonance is cut. So you actually ha the sound is a little bit weaker. Um, and so every single note that you play on the broke flute has a different tone. It has a different quality. It has a different sound. And we have to adjust to that. And um, I think that's what makes the Baroque flute so beautiful, is that it has this natural unevenness in the tone that allows you to explore so many tone colors and possibilities. And the, the wood certainly makes it a very, very warm instrument to listen to. I'm really glad that uh, we all get to take that in today. Yeah, it's perfect for uh, small spaces. Yeah. Like <laughs> so we're going to enjoy some more of uh, this flute and the members of Infusion Baroque in some more music by Georg Anton Kreuzer when we come back to Zoomer Hall after this. Welcome back to the Zoomer Hall Concert Series brought to you by Natural Calm, the better magnesium. I'm Kathleen Kajioka, and this afternoon we are enjoying the music of Montreal's Infusion Baroque. Now, I uh, want to get to know a bit more about this group. I'm sure you do too, uh, Rona, at the harpsichord, in case you're not watching on a webcast, but you should go to classicalfm.ca, then you can see everybody. Uh, how did the group start? When and how did Infusion Baroque begin? Well, we were all studying at McGill University, and we played together in various configurations while we were at school, uh, except I think Alexa and Cellini hadn't ever actually played together. And so I think it was actually those two who had the impetus to form the group because they wanted to play together. Uh, so we all knew each other, uh, but we, yeah, we started uh, this group. We did a concert in Montreal, and then one of the first things that we did was we uh, did a, a competition uh, in Chicago in 2014. Uh, which we won, and that really kind of launched the group and gave us a future as a group, uh, which we may, may, might not have had otherwise. Now, I know that uh, from experience that one of the hardest things about forming a group is choosing a name. How did you come up with the name? Well, in one of those early days, we were having a meeting over brunch, and we were all drinking tea, and we were just sort of brainstorming names and thinking of this and that, and all of a sudden, my brain just did one of those... Uh, uh, random association things, uh, infusion baroque, and it works in English and French too. Infusion baroque. Yes. So yes. yeah, it just clicked. Very clever. Now I think I was going to talk to uh, Andrea a bit about your programming because, as I mentioned, Montreal is a very, very busy early music scene. Lots of groups there, which is a plus on the one hand, but on the other hand, how do you distinguish yourself? Yeah, well, actually, you know, in a way, we're very lucky. Um, definitely, we're very lucky that Montreal has such a thriving. 
early music scene. And um, there's a lot of inspiration we can find from other groups. But what we do, what we try to do to be um, a little bit different is try to add other other provide a different context for experiencing the music or add other artistic media. So for example, we use a lot of storytelling. Um, we have a, a, a program that we actually performed yesterday afternoon in, um, in Almont near Ottawa that was called Son of a Bach and it has you know a bunch of Bach sons and, and you know Johann Sebastian himself, music by those guys and we tell some of the stories and, and help people relate to these actual composers, so they don't seem so so far away from, you know, us as human beings. Um, we also have a program called "Who Killed Leclerc," and it's based on, it's based on the unsolved murder of the composer. Jean-Marie Leclerc, exactly. The violinist, yeah. Yes, and so there's a lot of evidence that real evidence that we then present to the the audience and the listeners, and you know, you get the chance to solve his solve his murder yourself wow. with music by Jean, Jean-Marie Leclerc and his contemporaries or rivals or murderer friends. Well, it sounds That's like nice. it could be a, <laughs> a dinner mystery, actually. You could morph that. That's an idea for you there. Exactly. Anyway, thanks so much. Well, we're going to hear more of this composer that you have uh, so wonderfully brought to life for us, Georg Anton Kreuzer from the late 18th century. This is his Quintetto in E-flat.
Live from Zoomer Hall, that was Infusion Baroque with the Quintetto in E-flat by Georg Anton Kreuser. And that's featured on their new CD, Full of Works by Kreuser, and that's available on Leaf Music. And that brings this Zoomer Hall concert to a close. Many thanks to Infusion Baroque. That's Alexa Rain Wright, Salini Amouad, Andrea Stewart, and Rona Nadler, along with their friends Jacques Andréoul and uh, Amanda Kiesmat. That was a wonderful hour full of great music. And uh, if you want to see this again, you can check it out on our website. The full video will be there at classicalfm.ca, as are all the Zoomer Hall Concert Series concerts brought to you by Natural Calm, the better magnesium. I'm Kathleen Kajioka. Stay tuned. We are going to head back to Bill Anderson and his, his jukebox after this.